anybody that tells you violence against your own spouse is justifiable in Islam is not only a liar, but is ab he's absolutely disparaging the messenger of Allah who was sent as a mercy to all the world and certainly a mercy to women. So to say that this means that you can beat your wife, that you can be violent in your own home, a place where she should feel safer than any other place, how could that have anything to do with ma arsalnaka illa rahmatil alameen? We only sent you as a mercy to all the world. How can that have anything to do with a man about whom his companion said, The Messenger of Allah never struck a woman, a child, or a servant ever. And you have in the Messenger of Allah the best example. Is it okay for a Muslim to be abusive? Is anybody going to say yes? If someone said to you, is it okay for a father to beat his daughter? Is it okay for a husband to beat his wife? Is it okay for a person who is in a situation of authority to take advantage of that authority and exert some undue hardship or unrest upon somebody who is relying upon them because they're in that authoritative position to be someone who is the epitome of trustworthiness and integrity, but now they have violated that right? Would we say ever Islamically that that's okay? No, we wouldn't. And one of the quickest, quickest means to destroy a home is ghadab, anger, and the second, impatience. Isti'ajalu min ash-shaytan. Kama qara sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. That rushing things is from shaytan. And many of the ulama of suluk, they said that when you rush a lot, it's a sign of a disease of the heart. Because the heart wants to control things, wants to have power, wants to be able to shape things quickly. We're told so much that it's actually more holy or you're a better Muslim if you stay. But in fact, it has a detrimental effect on your iman. And there are shiyu who have told me that the, most of the children, most of the youth who end up leaving Islam came from abusive households. Most of the children who ended up leaving Islam came from abusive households. And what happens is they see this abuse, they grow up in it, and they start to hate everything associated with that life. And that includes Islam. So what they start to do is they connect Islam to the abuse. They connect Islam and the culture to the abuse itself and they start to just hate it all. And actually people, you know, these people will actually leave Islam or at the very least will hate Islam because they associate Islam with that abusive lifestyle and with that, that, that very, um, you know, ugly attitude and that ugly behavior that they had experienced. And again, a barrel use out. Another maxim of the law that everybody agreed on, one of the five maxims, harm will be removed. The woman is being beaten in her house, that will be changed. You don't tell her sister to go back and be beaten again. And that's what some of the imams tell people. They will. They actually tell her, that's, that's, you'll be close to Allah, you go back and let that husband beat you again and again. Never. Never. You know, she has a right, you know, to be protected. The community, and, and you know, that's what in the Maliki law, when they talk about that, you know, they also point out that like, you know, in, in certain countries like the Sudan, you touch your wife and you'll be, you'll be lucky to live another week. You know, because her family will come down on you. You don't touch women. You don't beat women. Why would it be okay for someone to have their rights violated in that capacity and now they also just have to be silent about it? They can't talk to anyone, they can't speak to anyone, they can't interact with anyone. They live the rest of their lives, the only people that they're talking to about it is themselves. That's not going to put anyone in a good place. And this is something that is well documented in our deen, that even backbiting at this point, you know, some people say, well, I don't want to ruin that person's reputation. You shouldn't care, but that person didn't care enough about you. Uh, to not harm you and abuse you, you should not care about their reputation. And in those moments, in fact, the Prophet ﷺ taught us that when, you, when you're averting harm from another person, uh, it's not backbiting. As Fatima bin Qais in Bukhari and Muslim, عنها, she asked the Prophet ﷺ, she said that I received the proposal from Muawiyah, not Muawiyah bin Abu Sufyan, another Muawiyah and from Abu Jahm. And Rasulullah ﷺ said about Abu Jahm, he says that Abu Jahm 
doesn't put his stick down, right? Meaning what? He's, he's an abuser. So Rasulullah was, was talking ill of that companion, but that was to avert a greater harm. So don't feel guilty and don't think that you're doing anything un-Islamic when you report an abuser. This is a major problem in our community. We need to think deeply. And mu'minun, ba'duhumu, al mu'minun wa al mu'minat, ba'duhumu awliya'u ba'd. The believing men and women protect one another. Protect one another. That's what wilaya is. You protect each other. Thank you.